When you're preparing to leave your home country to go abroad, it's an exciting time, but it can also be a stressful one because you know that when you get to your destination, everything's going to be different. The people, the language, the culture, which side of the road you drive on, and this can be a source of a lot of stress and anxiety. But fortunately, once you arrive in your destination, a lot of those feelings can go away because you're having a great time, you're enjoying yourself, you're seeing amazing places, you're meeting great people, and over time, you can adjust really well there, so much so that you begin to feel more comfortable abroad than you did at home. Now, the tricky thing that happens is when you get back to your home country, you can start to experience what's known as reverse culture shock, which is basically going through the process of cultural adaptation, but backwards. This can be very confusing because your home is a place that's home. It's where you grew up. And so it can be really disorienting to all of a sudden feel out of place in the place that you were born. You might feel sad, you might feel uncomfortable, you might feel depressed, and you most certainly will feel different than you were before you left. It's very common and it actually happens to everyone. And so in this video, I wanna explain a little bit about this phenomenon so that you can minimize any of its adverse effects on your mental health and well being. So what is reverse culture shock exactly? Well, it's a feeling of disillusionment when you return to your home country from your travels abroad. And the extent to which you might experience this depends on where you went, how long you were gone, how much you liked it there, and how different the culture is in your destination versus where you come from. The longer you're gone, the more you loved your new adopted country, and the more stark those differences are, the more extreme your reverse culture shock can be when you return home. This can be a very confusing time because home simply doesn't feel like home anymore and it's possible that it will never feel the same again. At first, you could be happy to be back and see your friends and family and tell everyone where you've been and what you've been up to, but all of a sudden, that newness of being back wears off and you can begin to feel lonely, bored, depressed, out of place. For me, it usually hits as soon as I get to the airport and all of a sudden the energy just feels different. It can be the busyness, it can be the people, it can be the politics on the TV screens, it can be the level of customer service or lack thereof that you experience with the airport employees. But landing at the airport is just the beginning and over the first days, weeks, and months that you've returned home, you'll start to notice this reverse culture shock manifesting in a lot of different ways. It can be in the conversations that you have with your friends that before seemed a lot more interesting and engaging, but now you just don't seem to have as much in common. It can be conversations with your family members where you start to feel like you're out of place. And you can find yourself starting to question or complain about a lot of things that you didn't even notice before you left the country. Why do we only have two political parties? Or why don't we recycle or compost our trash here? Why is our public transportation so bad? Or why does food have corn syrup in it instead of sugar? Things that you didn't even notice before or that you never questioned all of a sudden become up for debate because you've seen that there's other ways to do things, you've seen that there's other ways to live, and once you've seen this, you can't unknow it. And so you start to apply all of the things that you've learned from your travels to questioning why things are how they are back at home. The first time I experienced reverse culture shock, oddly enough, was not going back to the US. It was actually when I was a study abroad student in college and I moved from Costa Rica to Australia. Now you might think that's strange. Why would I experience reverse culture shock as a foreigner going from Costa Rica to Australia when my home country 
is the US. And that's because there are more similarities culturally between Australia and the US than there are between the US and Costa Rica. And I had fallen so much in love with Costa Rica, the people, the culture, everything, that when I went from Costa Rica to Australia, I actually experienced homesickness for Costa Rica. And so I started to perceive the culture and the lifestyle in Australia as reminding me more of home back in the US. And so I experienced reverse culture shock and this kind of interim twilight zone parallel universe. And it was very confusing and disorienting because 20 years ago, I certainly had no idea what culture shock or reverse culture shock was. And so I didn't understand the feelings that I was having. And that's why I wanted to make this video today because chances are, if you experience it or if you already have, it will be between your home country and your destination country. So the first time that you go abroad and when you come back, that's when it can feel the most extreme, but you can experience it on and off throughout your entire life. But don't worry because at the end of this video, I have some solutions for how you can overcome reverse culture shock and actually use it to your advantage. So what does reverse culture shock actually feel like and how do you know if you have it? Well, the first thing that you might experience are changes in your emotions. You might find yourself feeling more bored, listless, irritable, sad, depressed even. And something that I tend to do is isolate myself when I'm experiencing this. You just kind of want to be on your own. You want to work through what's going on in your brain. And after you know, initially going back and seeing your friends and family, you just kind of want to distance yourself and get a little bit more space. And that is a really common symptom of reverse culture shock. And the reason for this is because you're not feeling in your comfort zone anymore. You're not feeling very safe. You're feeling a little bit like an outsider, not completely like an outsider, but certainly not how you were before you left. And so this is your brain just trying to work out what's going on, how it's feeling and how to resolve this discomfort. This is compounded by life as usual while you were gone. So your friends, family, coworkers, they were all having normal life experiences that you were absent for. And so because you weren't a part of that, you might not know what they're talking about, certain references that they're making, inside jokes. And likewise, they can't relate to what you just went through, which could have been a very transformative life experience. They weren't there when you were feeling culture shock in your new country abroad. They weren't there when you were feeling the euphoria of riding your bike across Thailand or riding off into the sunset. They weren't there for all of the new friends that you made, the experiences that you had, and they weren't there for those very brief fleeting moments that we all have when we travel where you feel happier, you feel more connected, and you feel like you're glimpsing a piece of the world that you never noticed before. Everything kind of just makes sense in the world and you can't really explain why. It's like these deep feelings of significance or even enlightenment that you can experience while traveling. Not only that, but when you get back to your home country, you're only just beginning to comprehend the ways that you've changed during your travels. You're still processing it and you probably can't even really put it into words. You know that you're different. You know that your perspective and your worldview is different, but you're not even really sure how to articulate that. And certainly your friends and family back home aren't going to understand, nor are they really going to care. You could very easily be processing the ways that you've changed from a single trip for years or even a lifetime. And so this can be pretty depressing and you could feel like you have no one to talk to about it. And then on top of that, you actually are experiencing homesickness and withdrawal for the new life that you established abroad. You miss your friends, you miss your new routine, you miss the people at the coffee shop. And so as you are reintegrating in your home country, you're actually experiencing homesickness for the life that you had overseas. And this can make things even harder. 
So what do you do about it? How do you get rid of these feelings and start to feel normal and comfortable again? Well, I have good news and bad news. You have changed and things aren't ever going to go back to being exactly the way that they were before. But the good news is that you wouldn't want it that way. You get so many gifts through travel. There's so many benefits that you wouldn't want to have it any other way. So the first step in overcoming reverse culture shock is acceptance and knowing that it's normal, it happens to everyone, and there's nothing wrong with you at all. And going through this experience is going to help you become a better person. That being said, try to remain aware of the experiences and thoughts that you're having. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? But be especially aware if you find yourself having really critical thoughts about your home country and try to prevent yourself from fully identifying with those. If you're having a lot of negative thoughts about your home country, they're probably a little bit exaggerated at this time. Things aren't always as good or as bad as your brain wants you to believe. So when you find yourself complaining or getting angry about things, just remember, ah, it's just reverse culture shock. Things aren't that bad. Let me take a step back here and get some perspective. This is especially important if the things that you're thinking about are something that you have no control over and can't change. And unfortunately, these feelings of reverse culture shock are usually tied to things that we can't control and that results in frustration. So, you know, why is so-and-so gossiping about this? Or why is the political system like that? Or why do we drive on the right side of the road? Uh, so just, you know, keep all of that in perspective and know that it's all just part of the process and be grateful for that experience overseas that you had that allows you to see what you're seeing now. The next thing to do is try to stay connected and remain involved with what you love the most about the country that you just left. Stay in touch with the people that you met, bring pieces of the culture back with you, maybe have a night where you're cooking traditional food that you learned how to make while you were living there, and look for opportunities to connect with other foreigners who have lived there or other people from that country that might be living in your home country. So you can find some common ground. I like to use apps like meetup.com to be able to find groups based on different interests you have or even certain cultural or ethnic groups. There are also expat organizations like Internations that have chapters in hundreds of cities around the world. And this is a great opportunity to connect with people who understand what you're going through because they've gone through it before as well. Uh, the good thing about Internations is that you can connect with locals from those different cities and countries as well as international residents and foreigners who've moved there from around the world that can specifically relate to you on things like culture shock and reverse culture shock. You can also reach out for mental health support through your therapist or through an app like BetterHelp, but make sure to look for a practitioner that has some experience with cultural issues or international travel so that they can understand where you're coming from. After an initial period of introspection and reflection, you wanna get back out into the world, pick up a new hobby, get a new job, or give back. Volunteering and helping other people is the best and fastest way to start feeling better about yourself. So don't discount the value of getting exercise, fresh air, getting out and about, but also start doing something that's gonna give you a sense of purpose and meaning, whether it's volunteering somewhere, starting your own organization, or just contributing to a cause that you really care about. You know, Be the change that you want to see in the world, be the change that you want to see in your home country. And now you have that added benefit that you've been out there, you've seen it, you've done it, and you can bring back a new perspective and better ways for how to improve the quality of life in your home country. This is a great way to redirect any pent up energy or frustration in a positive way. It can be really tempting to just kind of stay home and get sucked into the downward spiral of Reddit and social media, but I highly 
highly recommend getting out there and getting involved in causes that you care about. And soon enough, you're going to forget all about that reverse culture shock. My fourth tip for you is to share your experiences. So whether you do that through starting a blog or a podcast, or maybe you join Toastmasters so you can get out there and talk about it. We are social animals and sharing our experiences with others helps us process them. I mean, that's a huge benefit of having this YouTube channel actually, is as I'm traveling the world and experiencing my own forms of culture shock, it really helps me to process it by sharing it with you in a video here on YouTube. So start your own YouTube channel, whatever you feel called to do. And if you have a hard time articulating what you're feeling, then look to art. Express yourself through painting, drawing, writing music, singing. Art is a great outlet to help us express emotions without necessarily using our words. So share what you saw, photography, whatever it is, and that will help you integrate those experiences and also share them to the benefit of others. But at the same time, don't be too hard on yourself. My fifth tip is to just give yourself a break. You might have a bit of a roller coaster of an experience here where some days you're feeling really great, you're feeling really energetic, and other days you're just feeling really lousy, confused again, and kind of like you're taking two steps forward and one step back. If you feel like you're backsliding a bit, like you were feeling really great for a couple of weeks, but now you're like back to the initial phases of feeling very confused and disoriented and negative and frustrated, then just take a time out, uh, have some compassion for yourself, do some self care. And in a few days or a couple of weeks, you should start feeling better again. And along those lines, be patient. Time heals all wounds, and the longer that you're back in your home country, the more you will integrate these feelings and the more normal you will start to feel again. But again, the good news is, is that you're never going to go back to exactly how you were before because you have evolved, but this process of evolution takes time. So just be patient, and then when you look back like a year later, you'll see how far you've come. Another thing that helps me a lot is planning my next trip. So while keeping in mind that you're not using your next holiday as a way to distract from feelings of reverse culture shock, you're just giving yourself something to look forward to and a new challenge and a new culture to explore. So whether you want to plan a trip to go back and visit this other country that you're missing so much, or if you want to go to a new destination, both are great options. This also could be an opportunity for you to decide if you want to travel internationally more often, or maybe if living overseas is the right path for you long term. So you can start dedicating some energy into looking into ways that you can live and work in a different country. Maybe it's the one that you're feeling homesick for. How can you get a job there, get a work permit, get a residency permit? And maybe this is a hint to telling you where you should be living long term, or it could just be an inspiration to be able to travel to even more countries and have more experiences before deciding whether to settle at home or abroad. Having another trip or experience to look forward to can be really helpful and really fun, so make sure not to miss this step. Reading books can also be really helpful. There's one called The Art of Coming Home that I really like, but any types of books on culture shock or reverse culture shock can give you even more context to what you're feeling and the science behind this process, the psychology behind it. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check out books on reverse culture shock. And even though reverse culture shock can be pretty uncomfortable at times, be grateful for this experience because you are now in an exclusive club of people who are seeing the cracks in the matrix from a different perspective than ever before and sometimes for the first time. And so this gives you a lot of insights that other people don't have. Also 
a responsibility to speak up if you think things should be different, but embrace this reverse culture shock experience like a badge of honor because it means that you're putting yourself out there, you're doing something different, and you're stretching your comfort zone. And from this experience, you can just keep building on it, keep developing yourself, and keep traveling. The longer you stay in your home country, the more this reverse culture shock will subside, although it won't ever completely go away. But just remember that humans are adaptable. You're adaptable. You adapted to life at home. You adapted to life abroad and you can do it again. But how do you cope with reverse culture shock? I would love to hear your stories and tips. And if you want to see more about how I dealt with reverse culture shock after coming back to the US after 15 years abroad, then you can check out that video right here.